Hello there, I'm Scott Ewart, and in this I am going to show you how to create enemies in Multimedia Fusion with independent health bars. Now this is a uh, vanilla project here, which I've just opened and made a new one. Um, oh, um, excuse me for the resolution, I'm using a widescreen monitor. Uh, in this video. Right then, um, so here we have a project and it's completely blank and what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a player and a baddie and then what I'm going to do is give the enemy some health which you could then deplete. So rather than one shot kills an enemy, you can kill them after say three shots or three attacks etc. So first of all, let's create our active object, which will be our player. So right click, uh, insert object, select active and drop it in. Uh, then I'm going to uh, come down here and rename it. We're going to rename this to the player. Like so, so that's now our player, and we'll want to give it some movement. So, if we come over here, we can then give it um, the eight direction movement, like so. Just basic settings, bring that over. So, here we go. Yes, that's what we want, just eight directions. So, using the arrow keys, we move around should appear, no it's always going to appear on that other screen which is annoying. Uh, anyway, so let's get rid of that. What I'm going to do now is create the baddie. Um, so let's create another object active and drop it in and then let's edit that and make it a bit bigger. So. Oops. 100 by 100 and uh, let's erase that no. that's the freestyle um, make it 2 pixels and we'll do it in red There we go, that's our baddie. Um, so let's uh, rename them. I mean, you could always give them some AI, but in this, I'm just going to have them completely static. So enemy. it's a bit big, actually. Maybe 100 by 100 is a bit big. Uh, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. Right then, so we've got our player here and we've got our enemy here. And what we can do is we could create. So if I go up here and into object and I could create a counter. Oh, there we are, went past it, right. So we could create a counter, uh, put it in the play area. Let's move it down a bit. And we can change its type. Uh, do, 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 do. Right now it is a regular number, I believe. So long since I've done all this. Uh, oh, numbers, there we go. Right, so what we can do is we can turn it into a horizontal bar, like so. So make that a bit thinner. Um, count from right, or is it from left? Um, well, if I set the maximum value to 10, and the initial value to 5, minimum value 0, Okay, right then. So, um, if I then come in here, I can then say uh, start of the level, uh, set set counter to ten. Oh, and uh, then I need to create a button. I mean, a bullet. So, insert object active. We don't want it too big. Let's put it up out of the way. Edit, let's make it two by four. Make it big enough so we can just about see it. Uh, and then if I zoom in on that, right, and uh, let's fill it with um, 
a blue color. Right then. <clears throat> so let's just put these, um, the uh, hot spot and the action point in the center. So it's there. And now we have a bullet, uh, which is somewhere up here. Uh, where are we? Active. So if I rename that to bullet, like so. So now what we can do is I can make another event where when we press on the keyboard upon pressing control, we shoot an object. Now, obviously, you probably want to do your own shooting engine. The, the way that it works in this is not amazing, uh, but it will do the trick. Let's knock it down to 40. Don't want to go in too fast so we can probably see what we're doing. Um, and then you obviously want to test the collisions. So do, do, do. I cannot remember. Test position. Select these arrows. If it leaves the play area, then what we do is we destroy it. Where are we? Destroy, destroy, destroy. <clears throat> So now when we shoot a bullet, when it hits the outside of the play area, it's pretty standard stuff, it gets destroyed. Now, what we do want is we want to do an event where um, it collides with another object, which is the enemy. This is obviously, I'm going through the standard stuff, then I'm going to do our multiple enemies. So then what you would do is you would say, um, subtract one from counter and destroy. And then you would have another event, which is uh, when um, compare this, if it was equal to, equal or less than, is always a good idea, lower than or equal to zero, then what you would do is you would destroy your enemy. And this only works for one single enemy. So now if we run the frame like so, now it's over here in another window, so now if I move around like so and just aim at him and shoot, as you can see, his bar goes down and eventually it gets to zero and he's gone. Now the bullets just go to the end of the screen. Now that's all well and good. Um, that's a basic shooting engine which and an enemy with a health bar rather than a single hit. Um, now I'm just going to just, just for the sake of it's driving me nuts I'm going to make those in the middle right then so say we want multiple enemies so we want more than one so we want to drag in another enemy and another enemy and we want each one of them to have a individual health bar but we don't want to have to create multiple separate um, active objects which is normally what you would do or you would create multiple counters and and link them up that way now what we're going to use is alterable values now I'm going to just cover what alterable values are. They they are um, each item, so each object has a set number of alterable values. Um, now these are values which are specific to your object. And I can show you what I mean by those. So if I come in here, um, there are alterable values here, which is a, one of the drop downs in the event editor. So now what you can do is you can compare them 